Hey, second grade. Welcome back. Happy Tuesday. We are going to start a brand new lesson, lesson four today, and we're going to focus on some narrative. So I'm excited to be able to start exploring some of that with you and learn more about what narrative writing is today. So we're going to go ahead and look at our objectives and what we're going to accomplish today. So writing day one, step one, learning about narrative writing. So please make sure um, you can see on our writing pack here, step one, learn about writing. And we have moved on to that narrative writing right here. So we are going to look closely today and find out what kind of writing we're going to be doing. And we're going to read a mentor text with it. So please make sure you have your iReady book, a green, a yellow, and a red marker, or colored pencil, or crayon, whatever you have to be able to mark up our mentor text to understand it better today. Our objectives are, I can identify a narrative diary entry, and I can analyze a mentor text. So that's going to help us a lot through our writing process today, be an example. So go ahead and get your iReady book open. We're going to be on page 100 today. So if you need a second to get there, go ahead and push pause, and we're going to be on page 100. So we're going to read and study a narrative diary. The narrator of the story, the narrator of this diary may surprise you by studying the mentor text. It's going to help you write your own narrative diary later. So let's go ahead and just take a look at what narrative writing is. So what is narrative writing? A narrative tells a made up or real story. The characters can be people or plants or animals and objects that behave like people. Hmm. So it sounds to me like a very interesting story and your characters can be very, very diverse depending on what you're thinking of about being creative. So narrative writing has a beginning that introduces the characters and setting a middle that's going to show how the characters think, feel, and act, and an end that finishes the story and it makes sense. So I want us to take a look and understand that a narrative can be a true story or it can be a made-up story. So you can write about something that really happened to you or something that you just kind of imagine and think would be fun. So why do you think that the why do you introduce the characters and setting in the beginning? I want you to think about that for a second. Why would that be important? Right. So it's important to let the readers know who I'm writing about and where the story is going to happen so that they can visualize what's happening in their brain and follow along and feel like they're a part of our narrative. So in the middle, hmm, why is it important to show how show readers how the characters think, feel, and act? Why would that be important in the middle? Right. It's so they will understand the characters and how they behave and why they behave that way. So you're telling them what they're doing, who they're interacting with, maybe how they feel or things like that to entertain and get your reader really interested in these characters and feel like maybe they are the character. And last but not least, is writing the end a good way to end a narrative? Saying the end. No. Because it isn't a very satisfying or complete ending to your story and your readers are going to be left wondering, well, the end, what happened more? Don't, I mean, they're not going to understand what happened. It's not very satisfying. So I want us to go ahead and Herschel over here is telling us a little bit more about what we're going to do today. So Ken wrote a type of narrative and he wrote a diary that tells the events in a lizard's day. Let's go ahead and turn to page 101 to read it. So we're going to be looking at this text over here. So we're going to be <clears throat> reading a diary told by a lizard. So Ken Moto is the real writer, but we're going to learn facts about the lizard, but he also has used his imagination to write this narrative. So the writer is imagining that he's a lizard. So it's kind of interesting. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just read it and to understand what's happening and just kind of enjoy it before we look a little bit closer at this mentor text. So please go ahead and follow along as we read the mentor text. September 6, 2015. Today was a great day to be a lizard. When I first woke up, I was shivering. It gets really cold in the desert at night. 
Right away, I crawled up on a flat rock into the sunlight to warm up. Then I noticed I was really hungry. I needed some breakfast. I saw a big meaty bug creeping slowly nearby and I thought that would make a delicious meal. My tan skin helped me blend in with the sand so that the poor bug never saw me. I quickly struck out stuck out my long sticky tongue and caught that bug. It was so juicy and tasty. Next time, sorry, next, it was time to explore. I crawled slowly towards a tall cactus to look around. Suddenly, I saw a shadow. I was scared. So I raced up the cactus to hide on a tan patch. The hawk couldn't find me. I was tired. I was safe. After a while, I headed home. It was a full day of adventure, and I can't wait to do this all again tomorrow. Hmm. So I want us to stop and think, now that we read this, what did you learn about where a lizard lives? So that's like the setting. What did we learn about the setting? Right. It lives in a desert. It can get cold there, because we can see that in the text. It gets really cold at night. And there's a hawk and a cactus. Those are the other characters or the other animals in the story because of who he's interacting with and what kind of things live in the desert with him. All right, what did you learn about the lizard from this diary entry? What did you learn about him? Right, and there we can see that they use the sun to warm up and they're hunted by hawks. So. Hawks are their predator. They are prey. So the lizards have to make sure that they are blending in and hiding from them. All right. What did you learn about the lizards' actions? What did they do? What actions did the lizards show? If I look in here, I can see hmm, the lizard climbed on the rock, the lizard ate bugs, and the lizard also climbed on a cactus. So those are the different places and actions and the things that he did. Or she, he or she, doesn't say. And so now we're gonna take a look and we're gonna read the diary entry again. As we read, I wanna think about how the writer uses facts in his imagination to make the lizard seem real, okay? So as we read it, we're gonna be looking at how the lizard seem real. And we're gonna also look at read the beginning and underlining the character and setting in green, okay? So beginning paragraph, let's get our green marker or pencil or crayon, whatever you have, Get that ready because we're going to look at the character and we're going to look at the setting. So let me get my green ready. All right. Today was a great day to be a lizard. Who's our character? A lizard. Go ahead and underline it. Lizard. When I first woke up, I was shivering. It gets really cold in the desert at night. Where's the setting? Right. The desert. So we know our character and we know the setting. All right, right away, I crawled up on that flat, flat rock in the sunlight to warm up. All right, so we learned about the character and the setting in the beginning. So now as we read, we're going to get our yellow ready for our middle, right? So we're gonna underline facts about the lizard in yellow and circle words that tell how the lizard feels in yellow as well. Let me get my yellow ready. All right, so feelings are circled in facts are underlined. So things that are just facts about lizards. All right, then I noticed I was really hungry. I can feel hungry, right? So that's a feeling in the beginning or in the middle right here, feeling hungry. I needed some breakfast. Hmm. I saw a big meaty bug creeping slowly nearby and I thought that would make a delicious meal. My tan skin helped me blend in with the sand. Hmm. Are those all facts? Are those all about the lizard? He saw a meaty bug. He thought it would make a good meal, a delicious meal. He was blending in with the tan. Hmm. And then I think those are all good facts. So we're gonna underline, I saw a big meaty bug creeping 
slowly nearby. It's a fact. That's what he saw. And he thought that would make a delicious meal. My tan skin helped me blend in with the sand. Those are all facts about the lizard. All right. I quickly step out my long sticky tongue. Wait, do lizards have long sticky tongues? Mm -hmm. So that's a fact about a lizard that we just learned. Long sticky tongue. All right. And I caught that bug. It was so juicy and tasty. All right, so those are all things that we learned and facts about the lizard. We got more in this middle right here to figure out feelings and what we've learned. All right, next it was time to explore. I crawled slow. Lizards do crawl slowly, so that's definitely a fact. I crawled slowly towards a tall cactus to look around. Suddenly I saw a shadow. I was scared. Uh-oh, how's he feeling? What should we do? Right, circle the word scared. All right, so I raced up the cactus to hide on a tan patch. Ooh, a fact, right, about his skin. He's hiding on a tan patch. All right, the hawk couldn't find me. I was tired, but I was scared. Wait, how is he feeling now? His feeling has changed. <gasps> tired. So he changed from hungry to scared to tired all through that middle, right? And we learned about what he's eating. We learned about him blending in. We learned about his tongue. We learned how he crawls. And we learned about him also hiding again, right? And his skin. All right, so now we are at the end. In the end, we're supposed to underline the words that finish the diary in red. So the words in red, let me get my red prepared. After a while, I headed home. It was a full day of adventure, and I can't wait to do this all again tomorrow. So does all of that wrap it up, that he's heading home, and he can't wait to do it all again tomorrow? Absolutely. It leaves your reader understanding that this is his daily life. He's home, and he's going to do it again tomorrow. So that is our ending to finish our diary. So make sure you underline it all in red. Okay, so if you need time to catch up, make sure you have all this underlined. Um, we are going to take more look, take more time to look at this throughout our narrative writing. I thought that was a very entertaining story and I got to learn more about lizards and I felt like I was really living the life of a lizard almost. I felt scared and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead I'm going to clear this out. I want us to make sure that you are ready. Our quick write for today is please write about what made Ken's writing fun to read. So what was so fun about reading this story today or this sorry, narrative, our narrative diary entry, what made it interesting and fun to you? Okay, write this question down, pause it if you need to, and I look forward to exploring more narrative writing with you as we progress through lesson four. See you all tomorrow.